Hello there, this is Smith Welding and Restoration. I am your host, Adam Niffin. Stick around, see what's in the garage this week. I'm going to give you the, the toolbox tour. Our utilitarian shop cart that never is empty, that we try to keep empty. Everybody has to have a tape and free. This over here, kind of give you the preview. I, I rebuild carburetors. A lot of quadrojet jet parts. Um, I rebuild carburetors. Got a hot little cam there out of an engine I blew up. Nothing wrong with cam. When I want to do carbs, little stool sits in there. I got a light, it's perfect. It keeps everything out of the way. If I gotta throw a towel over it, I can. So I arrange the space just for such. Um, mostly it's just miscellaneous garbage. Um, metrics that I'll never use on a carburetor, uh, some vacuum line. A bunch of miscellaneous parts. That's all these cabinets over here you guys keep seeing on. O-rings, um, cotter kit keys, different crap like that. Um, this is actually a teardown drawer. I've got two of these quadra jets complete. They're tore down, cleaned up, they'll have to be dipped again. But I'm basically starting I'm starting with the baser stuff. This is my carburetor drawer. Basically everything I need to tear apart a carburetor in here. I'll show you the other kit that I use the most out of anything here in a minute with carburetors and just everything. Um, I got some torques because you run into some torques. Yeah, you need a hammer and a carburetor sometimes. Cleaning brushes. Just all this bullshit hand tools that I had floating around. Never really had a home for anything. Um, it's been displaced in my main toolbox by better tools. The rail sockets. Wrenches. The rest is just bullshit parts. Those are uh, skins for my sandblasting cabinet. I got a cheap one. It works awesome. And that is my organized mess of carburetor parts. I got one that's Quadrajet, one that's Holly, one that's Edelbrock. And broken. Various distinctions therein. Uh, that's nothing bolts and shit. So that's kind of this area over here. Oddly enough, yes. Petroleum jelly. Um, that is amazing for all kinds of weird parts. Um, hell, oil changes even, I'll use them. So we'll go to this cabinet here. This is a paint cabinet, that's where I keep my paint products, that's where I keep the rest of the chemicals, uh, mud, sealers, primers. Uh, this drawer here, the gloves drawer. I got all my welding gauntlets in there. I got a pair of uh, number five shade lenses for cutting. Goggles. This is our destroy shit drawer. This is where, if it doesn't have a place, it ends up in here. Along with all just hammers. I actually used that hammer for many years when I framed homes once upon a time ago. This is all the body hammers I get. Keep around my slappy that I made. Still use the shit out of it. I got some tools out and about. This thing is chock full when everything's put away. Uh, that little guy's come in handy more than a couple times. Three quarter inch bar stock. Uh, half inch round stock. Drill a hole in the some bitch. Plug weld, round it down. This is kind of like an isolated drawer. All my lead stuff in here. That's the tallow for the paddles, the flux with the lead in it, acid brushes, body files, and the lovely, lovely lead. Uh, I don't know why that chunk of aluminum in, is in there. That's for welding. Uh, when you got to plug weld something, or patch weld something. Anyhow, all my clamps and shit for welding go up here. I got a speed square, carpenter's speed square. These don't have a home, so they go in here with this shit. Uh, 
odds and ends really, mostly cutting supplies. And, you know, I've yet to have to use these. I will, eventually. I picked them up at a swap meet cheap. All my cutting supplies are my studs. Two sizes of studs, the little skinnies and the big fatties. Uh, die grinder accessories. Basic stuff. All the wrenches for my die grinders and crap are back there. I got this little bar here. This is from a high speed sander. Basic stuff you need. Uh, this is all sanding supplies. Wet sanding, sheet goods there. Uh, all my DA wet sanding papers and my these are my hook it pads. My extra stock of stuff. Right. These are my heavy grit cutting. Move some stuff out of the way here, I guess. Uh, those are the mean beasties. That's why I take cars down with. They're amazing. They're like two bucks a pop, but you can't beat it. Uh, high speed sanding disc. I use five inch. I got a three inch roll lock. And a five inch and eight inch. I pretty much roll around it. Um, we got all our odds and ends, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, I use, uh, my friend Pete once upon a time showed us um, construction adhesive. Does every bit as damn good as any seam sealer out there. He's restored cars in such fashion. And I've pretty much started the same routine. This stuff I had on hand, but if I had to go out and buy it again, I think I'd buy this again. Um, it's... It's amazing. It stays flexible, like seam, automotive seam sealer does, more so than construction adhesive. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna dig into this big bastard. This is the everything goes in here drawer. I got my, my torque wrench. This is all of our everyday use items and a gobble of receipts. Uh, I got a mud pan, like a plaster's mud pan. I keep all my socket extensions and shit in. I don't buy the good ones, you know, that's a Northern. I got some Harbor Freight. I've got, uh, my favorites of these. The Northern and the, I don't know, the AutoZone brand. Generally speaking, when it's all put away, I got all my ratchet, my ratchets lined up here, half inch on down a quarter. Um, I will clean up the shop soon enough. Shaft. Um, if this guy can't do it, just fucking cut it off. Bought it used off the snap-on truck. Love it. My thumb of God extensions. Uh, that extension right there, that four-footer, or 36-incher, you need that one to get the alternator off of a 2000 contour. Um... Booger sucker, drawing fluids out. I made this tray, I got in some cheap metal in stock, so I made this tray real quick. It's sloppy and messy, but I spent like 20 minutes doing it. But this whole aisle was just a mess. All this shit was, kept getting shoved to the back from shutting the drawer. But I got my long handled meal nose. I got uh, my channel locks. I got like four set of channel locks that live down in here. Picks. I make a lot of stuff. I make a lot of my own tools. This was a screwdriver. Yeah, I got bored and twisted it, but um, just generally my picks, I make all of those. I've got three or four of these floating around the shop of 90s and stuff like that. Another Harbor Freight Butte is this little bugger. When I was doing a lot of engine swaps, this was indispensable. This side it has got a, a groove or serration, whatever it's milled, and it actually grabs a steel line, and this pops the plastic tubing off. I love that thing. Um, distributor wrench down in there. Uh, enough said there. I hate that thing, but couldn't live without it type of deal. Oh lordy, okay, I keep plastic files around, um, I file, and there was a file over there in my carburetor stuff too, and I keep that around to uh, file the carburetor surfaces flat and any other machine surfaces on engines and such, 
that's a carb tool. My flexible magnet. It used to have a light, but it's about the most stupid thing I ever saw because that little dot that the light was, it just filled up with grit. Uh, over here, I keep all sorts of bits and stuff. Um, these little Ryobis, these little Ryobi speed loads. These are awesome for stereos and all the different stuff. They're like 20 bucks for a kit. Uh, you throw it away when you're done. What the hell, right? Uh, safety bits. Keep a set of those around just in case. I love getting these extra long bits, the Phillips especially. Uh, if you're handyman around the house, you install doorknobs with these round long bits. If you get the square or hex ones, they, they, they nick the doorknobs. That's where I discovered the use of those. I use the shit out of my cars now. Um, bits, bits, bits. That's uh, for a Chevy oil pan. Rota zips. And I keep a bunch of those around. I used to have three. It's half and quarter. Squares. Number two Phillips. Various uh, torques in that kit. This is my Bosch bag here. And that little guy, he actually doesn't even ever come home. He doesn't live here anymore. Uh, and that's this. This is one of the most indispensable little gadgets I've ever picked up. I had a snap on one. It didn't have a light. Um, three eighths, a quarter inch on there, and I can take bumper covers and stuff off. He hangs out up here. Here's another throwback from my service shop days. Um, here's the trick. You go up to AutoZone or whatever, and they'll sell you the blister packs of hose clamps for like five bucks. Well, that whole thing I stocked full, restocked. I bought like six boxes. I don't think I had $10. Maybe fifteen dollars. Um, all of these, one, two, three, four. All these were completely empty. I had nothing uh, a year ago, and I said, "No, no, no, go in the back, get the commercial ones." Well, we can't sell you those. Well, why not? Well, they won't ring up on the front register. Well, they rang up on the front register, so they had to give me the commercial rate. Um, all right, second tier. This is where I keep all my wet sand blocks, and I keep these off of the hoods and fenders. You never know when you gotta chop something up. Incidentally, I also, in my wet sanding block drawer, because I just lack a better place, these don't go back on these cars. You know, the people don't want them on their cars. Um, remember the Omega? One of the fenders was a Ventura. That's a new Monte Carlo. That's a new Oldsmobile. I don't know why I keep this shit. You know. But I do. Uh, these are going to be the dry sanding blocks. I keep a uh, three inch brush around. And some Bondo shaping tools in this drawer with the blocks. I really am fond of these. I use these more than anything. And I think I had to get them at like O'Reilly's of all places. Um, Lordy, Lordy. We're gonna go down this whole bank real quick. These are all my gauges, instruments, whatever. OBD1 for GM. OBD2, I keep one of these around. I got out of the service industry. I still went out and got this after I lost access to the big machine. It's just handy. Mom comes over, brother comes over, girlfriend, you know. All your basic test, testing equipment. I picked this up at a swap meet. You do carburetors, none more gooder. This is like your bestest buddy ever. I'm gonna tell you a lot about an engine. Spark tester, I keep a trigger, a starter trigger. I played help finding that too. That and this gauge, this vacuum gauge, were a bitch to find. I don't know why. Carburetor is the only thing run off a vacuum. Oh, okay. Ooh, looks like some stuff fell over. All my punches for engine building. Ah, somebody tell me what that is. Again, 
We're in kind of the engine building one uh, drawer. Uh, that's a steering wheel puller. It fit, okay? Don't judge me. Um, engine assembly lube, another torque wrench or two, uh, cylinder hone, and I keep my three quarter inch socket set. Most of this three quarter inch socket set gets used for is punching out bearing races out of hubs and shit. Gear puller. Uh, ring compressor, uh, Dana axle, um, socket, uh, another, I think that's the Chevy axle socket, that's actually for a Ford one ton to do the brakes, to the rear brakes, you got for the axles. Uh, this is the air tools drawer of things that get greasy, okay? Remember I showed you that planisher that I made? Um, I wound up just welding a big old fat slug on the end of a, because I kept breaking my uh, hammers that I had made. So I keep it around, I'll still use it. I still do use it. Die grinder, punch tool, flange tool. Very handy, especially when I'm putting on aftermarket quarters and such. Air chips, cut stuff. You know, and you'll notice, man, I got this fancy ass cabinet and you're gonna, you know, you've noticed already most of the shit. There you go. Uh, that's another Harbor Freight Special. I mean, this is a drawer of Harbor Freight Special. Gotta love it. Uh, this is almost vacated. All the sanding stuff goes in here. If it can't touch uh, grease or grime, it goes in here. All my sanders and grinders and like that. I'm gonna charge this up, come right back. Ruby, we're back in action. Ah. Uh, I got some ratcheting wrenches, line wrenches. I should be really honest, once I got my snap on wrenches, they were fucking worthless. Nobody's ever looked at these. See those mill marks inside there? They don't grab the corners of the bolt like your typical uh, wrenches do. In order their sockets, they actually grab the, 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 the shank. Uh, I do got a set of stubbies. Keep odds and ends around, man. I mean, offsets. What are those? AutoZone Special. The only sockets I have that are snap on, though, are my 3 8 rail, deep and shallow. Um, engine swap stuff again, metric. I don't have a pair of standard crow's feet. I never need it. I haven't run into occasion to need them. They're various half inch. Again, half inch. The bigger bastards. Just a metric drawer. Um, I initially put the metric drawer on top when I was doing service work. And my standards drawer below that because generally servicing, doing service work, you're using metric. I haven't changed it because I figured I'd get lost. I've changed everything else. I like these. These aren't bad for a cheap set of wrenches. Can you see all that? These aren't bad for a cheap set of wrenches. I really do like these ratcheting wrenches. Uh, again, stubbies, because you, you gotta have stubbies. Um, Back with the tools we make. Well, I didn't make it, but I cut it down for purpose and function. I got more of these back somewhere else. Uh, again, with the expensive on the 3 8 rail. Um, Harbor Freight Specials Craftsman for everything else. Huh. Uh, implements of destruction, pickle forks. I keep old socket extensions that I break and I use them for punches and forming metal and everything else. Um, pry bars, keep those around. Expensive again, but damn it, those are worth it. That's a badass chisel set. Punch, chisel and punch set. No, I've never actually used that two foot monkey wrench on anything. Uh, what is that one? Is that my fuel pressure? No, that's my compression tester. That's a compression tester kit set. Uh, 
That's the fuel line set, uh, test set. These, that's a set of transmission plugs. Pull the drive shaft, boom. You pull the CV shaft, boom. And your transaxles. Um, fuel line disconnect. Uh, these are spline alignment tools for clutches. One's a Nissan, one's a Chevy, and I, God's honest truth, guys, I don't remember which. I keep extra clips. Those are, I think those are GM, and those are Ford. I don't remember. I don't do engine swaps anymore, but I keep stuff. Uh, so, my odds and ends, my E-sockets, everybody needs a set of those if you're doing modern stuff. Torques and hex. That's an expensive bugger all by itself. It's a, just your 9.6 or 5.8 spark plug socket, but damn it, it's nice. Again with the wrenches. Uh, that was actually just malice. It, it gave ghosts, so I keep it handy. Just because. This one's an interesting story. Uh, 2006 Cadillac. 2006? I don't know. It was early 2000s to mid 2000s Cadillac. The down tube for the EGR valve. It happens to be the same as an inch and a quarter. Whatever the metric version is. Couldn't tell you. But it's in the transmission. It's up the transmission tunnel or the exhaust tunnel rather. And you only have enough room to swing it that far. Um, there is no tool worth not getting the job done. This is one I cut down. Um, the other half is floating around. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, here you go. This is an interesting one. This one. You know, I, I, I get these <clears throat> and I'm chopping them down so I can put leverage on them in tight spots and I can put a pipe on it and look it. Uh, This one right here, 1979 Oldsmobile Regal. Somebody put the Chevy 350 long tube headers and had everything welded together. <clears throat> this is what it took to get the starter pulled. We had to change the... Oh God, what is it? Uh, output the the input bushing on the transmission. Is that correct, guys? I don't know. I changed the part, and I didn't even have a blind hole puller for it. Um, this was a Ford Must uh, two door Taurus. Yeah, that's it. Two door Taurus Ford Mustang that had uh, we did a motor swap. And whoever put the transmission, it was a new tranny. Whoever put the new transmission in did it all with impact tools on a lift. We didn't have one in my shop. Um, again, get some heft on it. Oh, goodness. This is that other end of that 16. This here, your S10 Blazers. The fuel filter that sits under the driver's ass on the uh, frame rail. Some of them, that's all you can get in there with. A stubby don't even work. So I save odds and ends. I just, I save odds and ends. Of course, those bastards. I hate them. This was ground score from an S10 Blazer I had bought, fixed, and, and sold. I actually made more off of the shit the guy left in his truck that, when he sold it to me, as far as tools that I could use. Then I made off the whole vehicle flip. Uh, that was actually the first vehicle I ever bought just to flip. And it was a nightmare. Wonder I ever chose to do it again. One empty drawer in my case. All right, down here, timing lights, pull plate, serpentine belt, inner tie rod tool. Here's another one. Anybody that's used them knows what they are. Anybody who hasn't, looks like a medieval torture device. Get a set 
the, at the very least, get a set like this, okay? I paid, I think, 50 bucks for them. Get a set like this. This is your strut spring compressor. Um, Harbor Freight's got them for like, I don't know, 20 bucks? They're cheap. Well, they're cheap. I, I almost blew my head off with a Harbor Freight set once. I was foolish enough to go ahead and try. Uh, electrical stuff. I use a lot of vacuum shrink tubing. I actually keep a turbo lighter. I doubt it will work. Oh, wow. And uh, acid core solder, which you're not supposed to use on electric components, but wiring up trailers and shit. That's what I used. <coughs> the screwdriver drawer. Everybody's got one of these. I don't use these near as much as I thought I would. <laughs> the brake drawer. I like that guy. He's handy. That's for your rear calipers that twist in because they are the emergency brake also. Uh, double flaring tool, various fittings, uh, pulley remover set because I had no better place to put it. Here's something fun guys. It's a drum spoon. To be honest with you, I still have never figured out how to use that blessed thing. I use a pair of channel locks, screwdriver, basic shit. This is the electrical tools drawer. Ah. Heat gun, grinder with a flapper. Um, don't ever take your guards off of these. Um, it's that knob on my knuckle. I've taken it damn near to the bone a couple times. No shop complete without a sawzall. Various other crap, heat gun. I think I got a sander back there. In a nutshell, that is the toolbox. I gotta show you this though. This little guy's alright. I'm really ha been happy with it. I was pissed when I bought it and realized it was third sheets. This is kind of the creme de la creme. Here's one of my ratchets. Um, I don't use it too often. Oh, weird drawer with all my hexes and torques and everything. I got these. Um, I got these in on a trade. I've never used them. Not once. Go figure. But uh, if you do anything, treat yourself to 80, 80 tooth uh, ratchets. I don't even have, I got offered off the, the truck the other day, a regular handle 36 tooth um, driver. You know, the regular handle is only about that long. I don't know what the hell I'd do with that. Be wary though, you break bolts until you get used to these. But this little guy right here, this is what I really want to show off. I love this kit. Um, it's, it's got everything. This, this little package right here gets used more than anything else in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis. This little kit. It's not even Snap-on. I said, hey, Snap-on guy, I need a quarter-inch kit for everything. I need a quarter-inch kit. So he digs out the Snap-on stuff, and it wasn't, it was more to it than this, but it was different, and it wasn't, it didn't suit my needs. I don't like this one as much. Um, here's the boneyard bag. This is how I get my uh, dollar entry fee into the boneyard bag. They don't give a damn about lights or fuses, so I take as many as I can carry. That's the first snap-on ratchet I ever bought. I said, why do you want a soft handle? That's bullshit. It just it feels like a toy. I changed my tune on that, by the way. Uh, this little guy right here. That little guy's badass, okay? Um, we went out to the boneyard to harvest the grill for that ranger. So I still got stuff in there. Um, but yeah, this little, back to this little guy. You got three E-sockets. You got your standards, your metrics. You got torques, and they're safety torques, too. I mean, I, I couldn't believe this thing. Um, you know, some guys are gonna cringe. I paid $150 for this kit. Um, 
at this point in time, if it doubled in price tomorrow and that got stolen, I'd buy another one. It's just been that great for me. So that's kind of the, the hand tools and such.